Hey everybody, welcome back to Nuvian's channel and today we look into the fact that Nux supports multiple bundlers or build tools under the hood if you want to, what it is, how it works and how it, this is related to Nitro becoming a Vite plugin. Let's check it out. Here we go. Yes, you heard it correctly. Nitro will just become a Vite plugin and the alpha for that is out right now. You can't use it with Nux yet, but you can try it standalone with a very simple config, this beautiful website. Link is usually in the description. And also, Puya gave a great talk at VConf a little bit ago. Also there, the video should be online by now, and the link is down there if you're interested in that. But this should be the focus of the video. If you're interested in all the changes around that, let me know, then we can make a dedicated one. Today, I actually want to talk about something slightly related. That's why I mentioned before, because it's about the internal architecture of Nux.js here. We'll come back to the packages on GitHub in a little bit, but first of all, let's take a look at what I actually mean. If we run a simple pnpm dev command in our normal Nuxt application, this one as minimal as possible, we see that Nuxt by default runs with Nitro, you all know that, with Vue and with Vite, right? But if you have a look at the packages here, then we actually see Vite down here, but also other different bundlers or build tools like Webpack, or RSpec here. And the reason for that is that Nuxt is actually a multi-bundler or multi-build tool framework. While it comes by default with Vite, it also supports Webpack or RSpec. And switching over isn't that difficult. In our Nuxt config, you can just set the builder value here to Vite, that's the default, or RSpec or Webpack, or we can even define our own object and then set up a bundle function. But to be honest, if you don't have like super strange requirements, you probably don't want to provide your own build tool config. But who knows, if, if you ever did that, let me know in the comments. I'd be super curious about that. It's just that it's possible and it's ready to be extended if there is a need for that. Now to have a look, let's just set that to Webpack. And here, if we now run pnpm dev, we will see, okay, all right, we need to install a different builder package, right? It says package Nux Webpack builder is missing. Do you want to install it? And of course, we say, yes, we definitely want to do. It's also important that if you use PNPM, you want to shamefully hoist your packages, otherwise things might break, as you've seen there. So a quick PNPM I shamefully hoist or setting that in your uh, NPM RC is fine. We'll just go ahead with that. With feed, you don't need that, but with the other builders, you will. And then everything runs, we can run PNPM dev and the whole thing will work as expected before. But now we see it runs on Webpack 5 and not on Vite anymore. The same will also work for uh, RSpec if you want to. And that's actually all you need to do to switch from one builder to another. Now there's some caveats, but first of all, you might wonder, why would I want to do that? And the reason here is, of course, that first of all, you might have like a legacy Webpack config that has some very elaborate loaders and custom plugins, and you really can't migrate away at the current time being. Maybe you want to in the future, maybe you're fine with it, whatever. We have the options at least um, to use that in Nuxt with without issues, as in like the core will work, the modules will work. We take a lot of care under the hood. All our internal plugins are unplugged, so they also run no matter which bundle you use under the hood. But if we have a look into the usage stats, then we see that the Webpack Builder itself has like around 1,661 weekly downloads. So it's a, well, a quite small amount compared to the Vite Builder that has roughly 821,000 downloads per week. So we see that this is not necessarily a popular option, but it's possible. Of course, then you might run into problems that some modules you use, like let's say the, the Nux DevTools, they might not support Webpack because they rely on data from uh, the, the bundler or build tool under the hood. So there are, as I mentioned, some caveats, but the most important part is flexibility here and to make sure that you are not fully forced to switch to a build tool, right? I know migration can be difficult and it's tricky, but if you use, for example, Webpack everywhere still, or SPEC or whatever, then you can still use Nuxt and you're good to go. And you might wonder, how is that related to Nitro from the beginning? Well, let's have a look. And the interesting part is this PR here, refactor Nitro Nuxt, extract Nuxt Nitro server package. And if we once again have a look at the Nuxt monorepo here, right, then we see 
Nitro server down there. So that Nitro was extracted into, let's say, a similar to a builder package, but of course it's not a, a builder. That is for build tools and bundlers, right? Instead, it is a server. Naming things is hard, but I think you get the idea. It's same concept of like, we can switch the implementation. We have a similar interface in the end, but for the server side. But is that the plan now? Should we switch out Nitro for something else? Well, don't worry about that. No, the idea is to make migration to Nitro version 3 even easier. Because with Nitro becoming a Vite plugin, or Nitro v3 being a Vite plugin, we can just add that to the Vite plugins we use anyway, and then remove the Nuxt internal Nitro code that's there already, and it's especially important for Nitro v2. Then you'll also outline that in the PR to make sure, okay, yes, we can disable automatically from the Vite builder when we enable Nitro as a Vite plugin, we have to do a little bit of refactoring, etc., etc. But it also opens the door to say, okay, we have easier ways to maybe add other parts there. Or even better, if you need to, you don't have to like fork Nux and change things. You can override a package or similar to the uh, builder interface that I've shown you a little bit ago, you could do the same for the server. So in the end, this allows more flexibility while like not removing anything. It just gives another point another flexible option there if you need it. Like most people probably will never switch from Vite because it's an amazing tool, right? Um, and most people won't switch from Nitro as like the, the server part of Nux.js, but people in theory could do that then easier. Would you want to do that? Probably not, especially not with Nitro v3 um, or maybe switching from Nitro 2 to Nitro v3 by overriding the package, etc., etc. So there are a couple of ways. It's just a little bit more flexibility. And this is one of the things I really uh, cherish about Nuxt itself. Like it is quite flexible and it will not stand in your way if you have weird requirements. Believe me, I've seen this in, <laughs> in countless consultancy projects. So uh, if that's a concern, don't worry about that. So what's the TLDR for our Nuxt application here? Should we, or should you use a different builder here? Well, as mentioned, if you need to, because you have a Webpack config that's shared everywhere, this is the way to go, go ahead, do it. But by default, I would probably just say, yeah, it's fine. We're running on Vite. This is like the shared infrastructure of the web, so you're good to go. But nevertheless, just having that freedom also to create an own one is something that especially people with strange requirements will benefit from. Any questions about that? As usual, drop it right below in the comments. Other than that, take a look at all the VeeConf talks. Links are also done there. It was an amazing conference. So much fun. Um, and uh, there are probably also, when you're watching this video, when it comes out, they were still releasing talks uh, from Monday to Friday. So um, Daniel's talk also coming up there where he showed some Rust-based CLI. Um, right? This, uh, this sounds exciting. For, for Nuxt. Nevertheless, have a lovely day, evening, night, wherever you're watching this. See you in the next video. And until then... Happy hacking.